The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. Nancy Majors is here. Uh, she is with Brown University. I first met Nancy over Skype. Um, yes. We Skyped Nancy into the Wikibon Cube and had a great conversation. Um, brief, but, but very good conversation about what you guys are doing at Brown and what you're doing with data protection. So welcome to the real live Cube. <laughs> Thank you. So how's EMC World going for you? It's been great. Very exciting. You come every year, or what's the scoop? Uh, I try and come every other year, but yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's hard to make it every year. Do you do, yes. I, I, like, I, IT practitioner like yourself, I mean, how many how many events do you do a year? Do you, uh, a, I, I do, I usually do EMC World or VM World, one, one or the other of them, and then I we do a lot of um, higher ed uh, type events where we get together with other higher ed universities. Yeah, specific to your industry. IT, right. So what's going on at Brown these days? You know, paint a picture for us of the, uh, the IT shop and the environment, and you know yeah. things are booming in in your business. Wow, yeah. it's just, I'm, a dr I'm, dr I'm running around with my 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 kids looking at colleges. And everywhere, <laughs> everywhere I go, their buildings are going up, and there's yes, growth, isn't there? It, yes, there is. <laughs> there's lots of growth. And um, in, in my organization, in particular, we have a lot of uh, uh, projects around um, virtualization, virtualization of the desktop. Um, we are reaching out to across our university to gather in huge amounts of unstructured data that are out um, in our faculty and administrative offices, research offices, where lots of uh, unstructured data is just islands, and uh, we're trying to bring that all into our central data center and protect it and uh, make sure that we have the right permissions and sharing and stuff and capabilities. So, so paint a picture of what your IT shop looks like. Maybe infrastructure, applications, you know, people. Yeah, so um, we have... Uh, uh, SCT Banner is our student information systems and that runs on an Oracle platform. So we have some uh, pretty big uh, Oracle databases and supporting that. We have a lot of SQL databases supporting all sorts of applications. Um, our medical records for uh, students and things like that. All, uh, lots of SQL databases. Um, we have, uh, let's see, Banner, Oracle, SQL, plethora of other applications. How about the infrastructure itself? I mean, you're highly virtualized, semi-virtualized? Yeah, we have about 70% of our uh, our, app, our servers are running on VMware, um, and uh, the other 30% is running on AIX LPARs. Um, so I guess you would consider that 100% virtualization if you consider the LPARs to be virtualized. Well, they, I, I would think they are, right? Right, well, yeah, so then we are 100% virtualized. So. Um, we just had a segment on virtualizing Oracle. We remember early on, um, I say the early on, er, in the early days of you know, VMware penetrating Oracle, there was a lot of FUD in the marketplace, a lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of tension, you know, with yeah. marks, particularly amongst Oracle sales reps. We love you guys, but uh, you know, you didn't, they didn't want VMware coming into yep. you know, the Oracle environment. Did you experience that, and did you just sort of damn the torpedoes, or how did that, were you afraid that Oracle wouldn't support it? You know, they, Talk about yeah, well, you're gonna have to go back to physical if there's a problem. Do you remember those uh, days? Uh, so we haven't we haven't put our our Oracle. Is still oh, you running. haven't. You I, haven't I was running on AIX, but we yeah. have a project to actually look at moving that now onto an Intel platform, right? Oh, okay. As opposed to the LPARs are virtualized, but uh, Oracle has no problem with that running on that type of virtual environment. So, so we've been you know we've been doing a women in tech series yeah. this week. It's pretty, been pretty cool. Uh, John Furrier has been, been running it. And uh, I don't know if you, your title is not storage admin, it's you know, Associate Director of Disaster Recovery and, and Storage Services, but yes. you're the storage guy. I am, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. You know, what's it like being a woman in, uh, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a storage admin's world? I mean, most storage admin, are, you know, you look around the EMC world. There's, there's not a lot of lot, women here. There's a lot of guys. <laughs> there's no line at the admin, ladies' so. room at this place. So, <laughs> so, how, so, so what's it like? Uh, you know, I. I Grew up as a Unix admin, real early okay. on, and uh, I won't tell you when because I'll date myself. But um, yeah, I've always been uh, like one of the lone women in in the IT field here, and uh, it's interesting. It's an interesting dynamic. You have to like earn earn the respect along the way, and uh, it's been great for me. You've I, embraced I, it though, yeah. I have absolutely. Yeah. So talk a little bit about um, 
you know, what you're doing in terms of uh, protecting your data. This is sort of the conversation that we had over the yeah. Skype at Wikibon, but yeah. take us through that. Yeah, so um, we have a lot of different levels of protection. So um, on our uh, high priority applications, we do um, data replication uh, directly of the databases, and we using EMC products for that, both um, uh, Symmetrics Arrays and SRDF, as well as uh, uh, Recover point to uh, VNX arrays for some of the uh, SQL databases. Um, so that's the real high priority stuff that we actually just replicate the data live as it's happening. Um, we have uh, recently implemented Isilon, um, and we're doing data replication of our Isilon environment too because that's just so big I can't back it up anymore. I mean, you know, when you have a petabyte of data, it's how do you back up a petabyte? You don't. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> you replicate it. So, so we're doing data replication of that. We also have a uh, um, EMC networker environment where for our night our nightly backup environment, um, and we use EMC networker with VMware VADP combined with that to pr uh, to protect our VMware environment, and all of that gets stored to data domains running um, DD Boost with Networker. And then additionally, we got a whole lot of data protection. We got a lot going. of stuff going on. Um, our, our databases, in addition to the, the live replication of the data, we also do nightly RMAN and SQL dumps, and those are done directly to uh, data domains supporting um, RMAN and SQL. So Nancy, working at Brown, you get the, the benefit of, of being on kind of the cutting edge as the young kids keep coming through and all the yeah. changes that they bring and the, and the trends that they are, you know, kind of propagating. Right. How, obviously, Facebook was founded out of the school, Dell was founded out of the school, a lot of innovation, a lot of new processes. What, are you seeing any, you know, obviously all the kids are on mobile devices, so that's probably changed some of your guys' requirements. Yeah. What other kind of, uh, either on structured data or BYOD or other things, you know, are the kids coming through forcing you guys as a technology department uh, to rethink and change the way you deliver services to that constituency. Absolutely, you know, they're, they're, it's constantly changing that we're constantly trying to meet whatever need, you know, whatever their, whatever we can to help make their experience at the university a more enriched one. Um, our new CIO is actually on the faculty at Brown and he's uh, teaching a class, I believe it's uh, uh, the Internet of Things and, it's, and he's really engaging the students and getting them involved with us at, um, in the uh, central computing department for us to um, work with them to help them get better services that, so that we can give them better services and understand how things are evolving for them in education. Now what about just delivery platforms? Like, Because the kids don't use email anymore. Do, do they use yeah. it when they go to school? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that email is still our official means of communicating. Okay. Um, we're, a, we're a Google shop though, so we use Google Good. So Jeff and I were at um, ServiceNow Knowledge last week, and uh, Frank Slootman, former CEO of Data Domain, gave a talk, and he was talking about how the the CIO has got to become sort of a business leader, uh, and sort of putting forth a prescription that that the CIO has to really drive business, maybe come from the business. It's interesting to hear you talk about your your CIO. I mean. It, it's really not the business, but kind of is the business, yeah. right? Came from the side of the house that is driving the requirements. Yes. So what's that been like? It's very different for us. It's just, this is the first time that I can remember us having a CIO that's on the faculty, and it's it's a um, it's a different energy. It's it's and it's it's good. It makes us more focused on the students um, and uh, and their needs. Um, I wonder if we could talk about. Um, the organizational issues around DBAs and storage folks, right? Yeah. Um, a lot, you know, DBA is a tough bunch, right? Yeah. Um, they don't really trust anybody, and they don't they, want you messing with the data, and they want to know what's going on, and mm -hmm. they want visibility. And you say, I got a cover that's backed up. They don't, they don't accept that necessarily. I wonder if you could talk about that organizational right. tension. Do you ex have you experienced that in your career, and yeah. how are you addressing that? Yeah. So. Um, Back uh, when we were implementing the data domain solution for RMAN, um, previous to that, you know, the DBAs would run a backup of, uh, they, they would still run RMAN and they would put it to a local disk that, uh, a SAN drive, 
Um, and then it was uh, the storage team's responsibility to take that what they put out on that drive and put it into a, into a network or backup catalog. And um, they, you know that was it was really cumbersome because they didn't like you know they would have to go through a two-step process if they ever needed to go and recover data that was uh, older than a couple of days old and they didn't have the visibility into the catalog to do that so it was, it was a cumbersome thing. When we moved them onto the data domain, they were able to keep their entire catalog of their backups within the RMAN and not having to go out to another product to access that. Um, the DBAs, like you said, they're, they're, a, they're a different bunch. They want to know where their data is. They want to know that they have the right um, performance going to that data, and they want to know that it's protected in, their, in the way um, that they think is, pro is, is uh, appropriate. And that's, that's a reasonable thing for them to want, you know? I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're the owner of the data, you should be, um, you should have expectations, that, and, uh, you know, the storage team should do their best to work with you to meet those expectations. And that's what we really did with the data domain and giving them the uh, visibility into their backups and making sure that they had what they needed. But it's, that really is the key, is visibility, and it's been hard historically to give that visibility. It has so, been, right. So do you want to talk specifically about what the data domain infrastructure did that allowed you to provide that visibility, and, and then I got a follow-up. Um, so we no longer had to do this that two-step process right. where they would do the backup and then we would take it off into another backup system. Um, which just was to, a black hole. Which was a black hole yeah. to them, and it didn't, um, you know, it, it, we couldn't do that locally because it was too way too cost uh, prohibitive to give them enough disk space to hold a six-week catalog of backups. You know, but once deduplication came along, and once the, we got good performance on that deduplication, um, both network speeds and, and um, the processing of the the dedupe, um, it, it, it really opened up the gates for a whole new way of looking at. So, is it fair to say it, it didn't necessarily direct directly affect the DBA productivity, but it, it created um, a sense of comfort that they maybe didn't have before? Right, yeah. Well, and it, it, in some ways it helped their productivity too because um, for our DBAs, they, they now had their full catalog of backups accessible to them from any system. So if, if they didn't have a snapshot or something of a database and they wanted to bring one up in another environment, they could just quickly do an RMAN restore from any place, from any of their servers, because they all have access to the backed up data from all of the other ones, so. So yeah. what's, now how is it, has it affected your relationship? Did they bake you a cake? I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I think we had a little data domain party, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we did, we all had a celebration after that. That's great. Mm -hmm. So what's next for you guys? What's uh, what's on the horizon, the roadmap? Uh, Isilon's our big thing right now. I'm, uh, we're, I'm neck deep in uh, implementing Isilon for our campus. We are uh, happy to be rolling out a ha about a half a petabyte of usable storage to get all of those islands of uh, unstructured data that are under people's desks across campus and get those into a well-managed uh, environment in our data center. And a lot of that is so-called unstructured data, is that right? It's all unstructured data. And are you, are you dabbling in Hadoop at this point? or? Uh, you know, Hadoop and HDFS. Oh, all Hadoop. That, so. No. Well, so um, we, we've been walking around the show, hearing a whole lot about a Hadoop, and um, and I was talking to my guys, and we were saying, I'm like, we know that at some point this is going to be, we're going to have the requirement to provide a, a Hadoop file system, mm -hmm. and uh, the capabilities of Hadoop. We just don't know what that is. So we're trying to get a good idea of what we would want to do. Um, when that requirement comes at us, what you know, what what would we want to deploy? Um, to meet those requirements. Okay, thanks for coming on theCUBE, uh, Nancy. Last question, so you, know, you, you come here every other year, you sort of swap VM, so you won't be at VMworld this year, right? Probably not, Okay. No, yeah. Okay, so what's the takeaway from you? What's the bumper sticker as the, the, the bus is leaving the, 
the, the, the hotel or the conference center. What's your what's your takeaway? You know, the well, my snapshot. favorite thing of EMC World yeah. this year, Isilon. I love Isilon. I got to tell you, <laughs> Isilon's my uh, Why? my, you, my new like number one they'll, data they'll domain like and, that and Isilon. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's, what's so great about it? The simplicity. <laughs> it's the, uh, yeah, scalability, yeah. simplicity, deduplication, performance, everything that you want in a file system, and uh, it's pretty much. We watched the ascendancy of uh, Isilon when they were a private company and then became a public company and right. consistent feedback that uh, they just, that whole notion of a global namespace and simplifying uh, right. you know, file-based storage is uh, it's a good move by EMC, yeah. picking those guys up. It's a big part of their business now and growing very rapidly. All right, Nancy, thanks again for coming to theCUBE. It was okay. great to meet you face to face and uh, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from EMC World 2014. This is theCUBE.